I go from running around from doing this one thing to another thing. And I know at one point in my life, I'll never have that like individual individuality <coughs> of my life. Do you get what I mean? Like I can easily get up and say, hey boys, let's go record an episode or let's go create some content or something like that. Mm. Or I can get up and work on something that I'm passionate about. But I feel like down the line, and I don't know what's in store for me in the future. Well, he's dropping hints properly. Yeah. Who is she? Yeah. Uh, Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he's got an aneurysm. <laughs> G'day guys, welcome back to another Fair Dinkum episode. Uh, this episode's a bit different, nothing's changed except the fact that um, we'll be playing a game. So we're going to be playing Freshly Grounded, the game. My man Ali's got it behind the camera. Oh, you gotta give, do it again. Do it again for me. One more time. I just want to do the background music. Go, <laughs> go. Ready? Freshly grounded the game. The game. All right, so um, we've been wanting to play this game for a hot minute now, yeah? Um, and this game specifically, the whole purpose behind it is to create meaningful conv uh, conversations on a deeper level, mm -hmm. um, especially with people that you have a relationship with. You know what I mean? Like friends, family. If you're really trying to get to know someone on a deeper level, this is definitely the game to play. We haven't played it. We're going to play it on the actual episode. Um, and shout out to Faisal. Faisal from... Um, Freshly Grounded. So the boys at Freshly Grounded created this game that I just showed you. Um, and I remember when Faisal was speaking about it, he goes, because um, he's into the whole digiting, digital marketing and all that kind of stuff. He wanted mm. to create something which <coughs> isn't like as tangible that you can sell to people. All right. Then he realized, nah, the way that I can do is actually sell a tangible product. So he goes, me and my wife one day, and he's been married for a hot minute. Went out to a restaurant. You love a hot minute. Hot minute. <laughs> 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 the other hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> They've been married for a minute. Uh, they went out to a restaurant or whatever, and they're like, they chucked out a um, chucked out this game, and that's how they actually created it while conversing with oh, one another. So we're gonna open up the, um, the actual packaging. We're gonna get started, I reckon. Right, let's let's unboxing. Go. Unboxing. So this Shh. is two in one. Hey, we need ASMR. Let's see if the camera can be ready. Two two in one, bro. We're doing a we're doing an unboxing. Hey, read, read the first card. The only card in black. Oh, yeah. pod. oh, the back of it. How to play. Okay. Being vulnerable. Full stop. And don't judge. Full stop. Smart or do you all hear that? Don't so let's judge. So let's, go. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Only God can judge me. I want them to hear it, bro. Bro, <laughs> 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 I'll get you scissors. Bro, it's our game. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we forgot to introduce ourselves, just in case you don't know. That's Ashraf, that's Legendary, that's Ali, and I'm Sahail. How you going? There we go. You hear that? Bismillah. How are we going to do this? Is there, is there an order to this? I can just pick a random card oh, and we'll, we'll do one each. Now we'll shuffle do, yeah. the cards and, and into the microphone, into the microphone. Show us your shuffling skills. Shuffle into the microphone. Also, oh, the only card that's actually black, yeah, is the, How to play is card. the introduction one. And that card matters. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 and the rest of them are white. All right, beautiful. I'm going to shuffle them up so that... <laughs> he just got it. <laughs> <laughs> a bit delayed. Add right, then and now. Edit it out. Add then and now who? Edit it out. Add then and now. You want me to edit it out? Add then and now. Edit it out. Add then and now. Edit it out. Add then and now. Edit it out. Add then and now. Yes. I, I, yes. Okay. No shit. Sure. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon, boys, whatever one stands out to you, just go for it and then. Bismillah. Yeah, just answer the question. All right. But don't go through too many. Just go through one. I'll start with the first. You'll start first. Let's go. <coughs> who's wait, wait, who's who's first? Is it all? For, all I reckon the person will kind of know who they want to ask first. Yeah, yeah. So Bismillah. What person? Who are you talking about? The radar. Oh. This is some good the questions. The guy reading out the question. Oh, so we pass right. on the deck. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we'll pass on the deck. I'll pick <laughs> yeah. a question. I'll read it out. And then next we'll pe pick a question and they'll read it out. All right. Beautiful. But this is this is a very, very good question. Actually, it's a bit generic. This one. All right. 
What part of your present will you miss the most? So, that is a good one. What part of your present will you miss the most? Who are you asking this question to? Who stand? What like? Who? What do you call it? <coughs> who does this question stick out to the most? Like when you hear it, did you guys get like a light bulb type of moment? Where you're like, yeah. I reckon Ashraf. I don't know why. I'll kick it off. Because it sticks out to me a little bit. Then. Ask the question if you guys yourself, <laughs> <then>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll answer yeah, the yeah, own question. Yeah. I'll answer the own question. What part of the present will I miss the most? Um, this whole journey that we're currently going through, like I'm currently going through. Like I'm at a phase of my life where everything's just happening and happening and happening. Where like I go from running around from doing this one thing to another thing. And I know at one point in my life, I'll never have that like individual individuality <coughs> of my life. Do you get what I mean? Like I can easily get up and say, hey boys, let's go record an episode. Or let's go create some content or something like that. Mm. Or I can get up and work on something that I'm passionate about. But I feel like down the line, and I don't know what's in store for me in the future. Well, he's dropping hints properly. Yeah. Who is she? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> 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 well, uh, is that an aneurysm? Must <laughs> 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 Johnny English, yeah? yeah. I want to take you back to Mozambique. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I know that like at one point in my life, this is all going to go away from me. Whether like, like Fedin can, for example, if it goes big, inshallah, or like let's just say I get a full time job out of my university degree, or if I'm to get married, I have a family, you know. Before you go further, yeah. the only way we're gonna get big on Fedekin is if you like and you subscribe. Mm. So we're gonna give you a second before he finishes his answer to just go ahead, like and subscribe. <laughs> now go ahead. Wait, Thank wait, you. wait, wait, wait. Some of you guys actually haven't liked and yeah, subscribed. Yeah, no, I saw you. Yeah, we saw you. You, Khadija. <laughs> Make sure you press the button. Go ahead. Tell us about Khadija. <laughs> 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 My um, name, well, I'm not gonna look. <laughs> but yeah, so I think um, this whole individuality thing. I remember speaking to um, my auntie once, and we're having a conversation, and she's married and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, she's a person that I really, really look up to in the way that she runs her family and the stuff that she does in her life, and the, the, her ability to keep busy without wearing out. If that makes sense. Oh, so she I, never burn out too much. She doesn't burn out too much, and she's Michelle. getting up early in the morning. She's got two kids, got a family to run, and like. Me personally, ideally, that's the way that I would have a family. You go, but I don't understand how she does it. You get what I mean? And I think a lot of people, what do you call it, sometimes want the fantasy or the ideal relationship one day and they're always looking into the future and thinking about these dreams and realities that like might not happen. You know? And I, I was that person. So I said to her, I had a conversation with her once and, and I asked her and then basically she was advising me. Yeah, and I remember she said this one thing where she goes... Um, do as much things as possible while you're an individual before you get tied up. And tied up not in a relationship specifically with another person, but tied up with things down the line that you can't really say no to. Mm. You get Life's what I mean? responsibilities. Yeah. I work, up, needs. I work up a part-time job right now. I can mm. just dip from if I want. Five you know before I mean? five. Five before five. Take care of your youth before. Exactly. And in health. Your free time mm. while you yeah. still got it. Because there's obviously going to come a time where you don't have that free time. Mm -hmm. 100%. Just, the word freedom popped to my mind straight away. Yeah, because up. I know a lot of people tell me it's like not in a bad way, mm -hmm. but when you get married, when you have kids, you have other people dependent on you, mm. and other people <coughs> like ha responsibilities. You have a kid that needs to get fed. You have a wife. You need to work, and you need to create a livelihood and stuff like that. Or when you have a job, you have projects. But now maybe we're not working in our field or our industry or have our own business. Mm. So the first thing is like I'm not like full of responsibilities right now. Like as much, I have more freedom. Yeah. So that's like something I'm going to miss later on. A lot of people always say like, I, I regret not doing this. I regret not doing that. I wish I had more free time. Yeah. So like in the present moment, I have the free time. I should make the most of it before I start, you know, not reminiscing about it five, ten years Difference. down the line. Yeah, it's mostly the, like the flexibility of your routine. So like, like Willie said, you, you're work, we're working these days, but then it's so easy if you really don't want to work this job because we don't have the financial responsibility we can actually like quit that job, yeah. do something else, try something new. But then before you know it, if you do get married or you, you do get like a full-time job with financial responsibilities, you're tied up. What was the and question you again? What, 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 do you know? Sorry. What, what part of your present will you miss the most? It's probably even like health. Because now like we're younger, we can kind of like, we know how it was a couple of years ago when we used to play sports. We didn't need to stretch. We didn't need to, we could eat whatever we want and still perform. Now it's like, we don't stretch, you get injured and stuff like that. Imagine five, ten years down the line. Like mm. if you just, we, we, us, we don't add weight as like quickly, mm. but maybe in five years or ten years, you might add like like that. But you know, like Ramadan, like we just turn our whole body yeah. upside yeah. down, you know? The you question, can't adapt as quick. The question is the most though. So 
if you yeah. had to pick out of anything and you have to sp- specifically pick one, mm. what would it be? Yeah. You know, would, what is freedom nah, yours? Yeah, freedom, because time freedom. is the most valuable thing in the world. How about you, boys? Yeah, I would say like f- free time mm-hmm. because I feel like since I'm still at uni, you have a lot more free time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also say the the like not having as much responsibility. You're obviously, f- free time, but I don't know, just just knowing I can take risks now. Yeah, and mm-hmm. there's no real repercussions besides obviously if it's a monetary risk, there's just oh I lost whatever amount of money or yeah. But you've still got that that leeway to make a mistake and just go ahead again and because they tell you it's the best time to do it. It is. Your twenties. It's gonna make the most time, man. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you don't know what your niche is yet. And we're not supposed to figure it out by now anyway. Mm. A lot of people put pressure on us to figure things out. By by 25, you should be married. You should have at least two uh-huh. kids. And da, da, da. I was like, who, 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 who's creating these? Yeah. You Standards. Know? Yeah, yeah. But then you realize that you've created them for yourself as well. So then when you try to develop on these, how do I say it? Expectations. These expectations that you put on yourself. Yeah. And they're just not realistic in the end of the day. Even mm-hmm. if you're 29 or 34 or 36 and you start becoming switched on then and you have a big change in your life, that's still so young. Like the prophet got revelation at 40. <coughs> yeah, well. You know, yeah. like things, people can change like their life at any age and it's never too late. So it's one of those things like the expectations, you know. Yeah. There's always more free time. And it's like what he said about his auntie. Even when you get married or you have kids or you have a full-time job, you're still in control of your time. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like that episode we did about learning to say no. Like, yeah, you know? but to the degree that you are in control yeah, has decreased. Now. You get what I mean? Yeah. And that's another luxury as well. Like, the whole idea of our twenties is like this. This is this is my belief. What I think, yeah, is just go out there and create some experiences. Mm. Like, do something. Whether it's like no regrets. Like, yeah, no regrets whatsoever. Mm. Go out there, do something. Whether it makes you feel uncomfortable, whether it makes you feel good about mm. yourself or whatnot, just do something because maybe that one thing that you go and try mm. might be the thing that you go and enjoy for the rest of your life. Mm. And you never know. So it, but you can't do it if you're just sitting down and doing the regular shenanigans. You sound you know like I mean? a G-pad. Say again? You sound like a G-pad. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 um, next Ask question. Cousin, I got the next go, one. Go. go on, Ashraf. Give it a shuffle, sir. There we go. MashaAllah, you should work for Crown. <laughs> do you need to be more in control or less? Oh! I can answer that question very yep. easily. Yeah. Take it away. Take it away. I want to pass this to Ali so when he's ready. If you asked me this maybe solid two years ago to a year ago, I would say I would definitely need to be in more control. 150%. The only reason why is because the one thing that I really hated was uncertainty and then having somebody else or something else dictate terms for me and what's going to happen and what's not going to happen and I had to sit there idly and wait to meet my fate you know what I mean mm. I hated that you know and then um, because it caused me a lot of anxiety like I told you from before I was I suffered a bit from panic attacks and stuff like that mm. and like obviously uh, I did suffer from OCD as well when I was younger so yeah. not being able to control every situation was very difficult for me the, the very difficult one for me to like handle and then um I kind of had a situation in my life where it kind of pushed me to go regardless of the situation and wh- this is whether this is people's opinion of you because you're never going to have everyone like you or dislike you er- or like you know what I mean like not everyone's going to like you in no, the end of the day yes. but then on top of that then there's also situations where it looks like you're the perfect candidate for a job or something like that like you have everything nece- you still don't get it or for example like you're, you can see blatant, uh, like it's a blatant violation, yeah? Like somebody just disrespected you, yeah? And you did nothing to deserve it. And um, you, you, you're you like, bro, no, I have to get my rights, you know? I have to get my justice from this situation. Yeah. I'm not going to stand for it. But like, you have to sit there and think about it and then you're like, a lot of the times, yeah? W- like if not always, we're powerless. If not always, because there's something or someone who's already written things for us and someone who's also already already like paved or, or carved out what's going to happen and how it's going to happen and when it's going to happen. And that is the most comforting thing for me, you know? And when did you realise that though? I told you two years ago after yeah. like a certain situation occurred, which I'm not going to develop on. But before those two years, like before that two year gap, whatever, you felt like you had no control of your time. Or like you no, 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 I felt like I needed control. You needed control. I felt like yeah. I needed control of everything. Yeah. Now, bro, it's like 
whatever happens happens. More, let's say mellow. You know, yeah, a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot less in need of control yeah. when it comes to everything. When it comes to friendships, when it comes, like for example, I would be very anxious if, for example, I texted a mate, and then I didn't get a text back. Oh, what did I do wrong? And why hasn't he texted me back? Oh, and wow. yeah, that would be like two years ago. Like mm. I would be like. Or a friend request mm. for like some random or something like that. Like, oh, this guy's a scumbag or he thinks he's better than me. And, yeah. then, and then I would need control. I would need them to give me the, the reassurance, basically. Mm. And then I realized a lot of it is based on your insecurities. Mm. Yeah, when it comes to n- in need of control, it's a lot to do with fear of rejection or fear of abandonment mm. or fear of something. Like there's always, a, there's always a fear that it stems from. And when you release that fear... Like, I haven't had a panic attack since actually developing or, like, actually figuring out what my problem was. Like, I hadn't had a panic attack since, mashallah. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And alhamdulillah, I thank Allah for me going through that situation mm. because it allowed for me to facilitate my my emotional stability in, the, in, in, in life in general, bro. Yeah. Because so now, it's like now it's like, whatever happens, happens now. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. And to like trust exactly. in Allah. Mm. And then it's like, I'm not in need of as much control because that desire to have control of every situation, it's unattainable. Because it's impossible to control every single situation because a lot of situations that are either external, yep. where it's like other people's opinions of you, other people's, like you said, job opportunity stuff, you're not in control. You can have, like you said, the best interview ever, the best resume, the best display. It's not in your control. 100%. So you understanding that is a, it's a powerful thing because also it makes your it, it can affect your mood a lot of the time. Yeah. Because if you're always getting affected from other people's opinions or external things, mm. yeah. and desiring to have control of the situation, it's like yeah. you can't. You walk into a new room and everyone's friends. You can't just come in and start trying to control yeah. the room or something and like that. You gotta, yeah. you know, there's but you gotta ease into a lot of things. And not even that. Like even <coughs> having a lack of control takes you from the presence of certain things. Yeah. So like you might be on a podcast right now, but you're stressing about something that's happening outside of the room. You know mm. what I mean? But then, like, you only have a certain space of mental energy. You know what I mean? Definitely. You can't be here and at home and then, like, 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 let's say with your, your missus and also at work and then your other side hustles. Do you get what I mean? The one thing that I would, I would say, in developing on your point, one thing that yeah. like, if I could give advice <coughs> to somebody who has a similar thought pattern to myself, yeah. or the old version of myself, is learn what the word compartmentalization means and develop it in your day to day life. Because. I'll, I'll give you an example, yeah? yeah? For example, I had a fight at home with one of my family members and I'm just very irritated. I take that to work. My day's kind of ruined now. now. Now my shitty mood is rubbing off on somebody else and then somebody else doesn't like the way it is and then there's like a, there's like a topple effect, basically. Yeah. And then, and then what happens is you take it everywhere throughout the day because you had a fight, for example, with a family member or with a friend or whatever it is. And then what happens is you come home to sleep and now everything in your life on that day is just mm. ruined, you know? Mm. And um, one thing that you have to realize is when you go to work, f- just compartmentalize. I'm at work, this is what I feel. When I'm there, you know? And one thing that I did or I developed, alhamdulillah, this is obviously like just like, just like to further develop on that compartmentalization thing is when you're in your bed sleeping and you know, and we've been told this consistently, that we're not guaranteed to wake up and sleep is a little death, yeah? Know that whatever problem you have doesn't exist tomorrow yet Mm. because tomorrow doesn't exist for you yet Mm. and you don't know if it's written for you. Mm. So even to the point where you're compartmentalized before you go to bed, Mm. okay, and um, and, uh, and I'm almost developing on this, like, okay, I'm going to bed now. Now I know that I can even set up my day if Allah gives me the ability to wake up tomorrow. I can set up my day in a bad way or a good way right now. Mm. So what am I doing? Am I going to keep thinking about this person that's irritated me, ruin my sleep, you know? Or am I going to go do wudu, pray the two rak'at, you know? Realize that there's an angel now that's going to protect me until the next day. And the shaitan, I'm going to give me bad things and ruin my sleep and do, like run a number on me. like You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's basically like make sure that you compartmentalize your life. Mm. And even on that, we think about control. It's like sometimes you, someone does something wrong to you mm-hmm. and you want them to apologize and you give them all the hints, but they're not going to apologize. Mm. And I know sometimes people say like, even when you forgive someone, you shouldn't forgive because they say so. You should forgive because that grief and that grudge and things you hold on to is going to affect you more. Because you're going to go to work cut. 
then you're going to go talk to your family members and you're going to be angry and you're going to talk to your friends and you're going to be holding on to all this stuff. It's like forgive just for your own sake, not for anyone else. Because yeah. mm. so you're transferring that negative energy all around everywhere you're going. It's like yeah. you just got to realize because if you take it to your mates or whatever, the negative energy, even though that energy came from home, you just got to deal with that and move, like move on. Like, like you were saying about, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you don't know if tomorrow is guaranteed. Tomorrow is literally a fresh start. Yes, there's mm. like, you know, motivational pictures saying, you know, new day, fr- like it's a fresh start, whatever. It's actually legit. Mm. You can actually forget about whatever happened yesterday, all right, and then you move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wha- what about you? Do you think you're in need of more control or less? I'll say less control because um, I feel like a bit of the uncertainty of, you know, m- coming to the end of the chapter of like university and then moving on to like full-time work and, you know, Having to move out of home and all that—that that comes that comes to my mind a lot. Mm. I don't know why, but that's just how, how that's just myself. Maybe more than often than other people, but I just have to realize that you know you have to have more tawakul and just you know do my bit. My dad was saying last night to us that you just have to do your bit as much as you can, and then leave the rest to a lot because you know it's all written. He's the best of all planners. Mm. Like it, it's it's so simple, like cliche, but you have to constantly keep reminding yourself. It's a hard, that. it's a hard thing to grasp in the moment. Yeah, it like is. Like right now, that we're not going through. Like I can only speak for myself. Like right now, because we're not in a state of hardship, mm. it's easy to grasp and be like, oh yeah, that's just that's something that rolls off the tongue. But when you're in that situation where there is a hardship, it's just like it's the hardest thing in the world. And you can't mm. see what's ahead at all. That's yeah, why. that's the hardest part of it all. Oh, definitely. But yeah. that's why it's tawakkul, man. Yeah. That's why it's tawakkul. What was the question again? Which one was the bottom one? The yeah. control I question. Because I want. Like, are you, you need, need more, more control or less control? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, mm. a big thing is understanding your own personality. You know, Monique, we spoke about um, what it means to have like self-esteem. Mm. She goes, know your strengths. Mm. So you have to know in which areas of your life you need more control and you need less. Because external, you might need less control because you, that's where it's tawakkul. But then internal, you might need more control. Because you might have a life where it's like you keep getting pulled in different directions. Yeah, like enoughs as well, man. Yeah, and your desires, your desires get the best of you. It's like, no, I need more control in my life. Over my desires I know what you mean. And also I need more control over Like the things I do Because sometimes like I know for me Sometimes you get overwhelmed by Getting pulled in different directions Like I have to do this for this person And this for that person And this for that person And it's like When can I do anything for myself Definitely. So you might need more control Like over your decision making process Or mm. your time allocation Your time allocation yeah. and stuff yeah. like that yeah. And even just like It's the, your, your mood Because it affects your mood When you just like Not like your mum But your parents or your family members Are Telling you do this, do that, do that. It's like I wanted. I had a plan to do my own thing. Yeah. yeah. So just controlling that kind of the internal aspect of your life, and then external, it might be like I need less control. That's cool. Yeah. 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 I yeah. didn't think of it like that. That's I was very interesting. Like That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Like I was thinking in its totality, like when it comes to control of my life. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got a point. Yeah. That, that was that there was that certain aspects. Yeah. yeah. Especially desire. You yeah. have to kind of, like even your desire for like eating the right foods or stuff like that. It's like that's area you should all have under control. Oh, definitely. You know? Yeah. You can't yeah, overindulge yeah. in anything. Yeah. Even the control situation, because that's what I was going to develop on, but I didn't know there was a terminology for internal and yeah. external control. Like I realized as of recent, yeah, like I think may, maybe when I graduated from high school and ever since like I got a full time job, no, f- part time job and whatnot, um, I realized me personally, the way that I sort of take control in my life, like I want control. But I don't give control to everything. For example, I keep myself entirely busy with things. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? So that's my way of like dealing with certain situations. Because I feel as if if I can like have control of my day to day basis, like let's say task and all this kind of stuff, then I have control over my life. Mm. But you know what the problem with that is? Is and this is me learning as of recent. Yeah, once you gain control of one thing, you lose control of another thing because you don't entirely have it. And I was speaking to boys the other day. And we're going out to eat and he said this one amazing thing. Um, and his mate was giving, because that guy got recently married and his mate was giving him advice. Yeah. And the advice that he gave to him was basically the only way that you're going to be like to an extent happy. Yeah. Is if you just give everything 100%. You know what I mean? Like it, wherever you currently are. So right now I'm on a podcast oh, okay. with you boys. Yeah. I'm going to focus on the podcast, give it 100% and do my best because that's mm. all I can do at the moment. You know what I mean? When I'm with my wife, if I'm with my friends, if I'm at uni or something like that, what I'm going to do is give it 100%. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because everything else I can't control mm-hmm. out of that aspect. You know what I mean? So it's giving that 100%. Because it, when once your mind dabbles somewhere else and yeah. there, 
bro, you can't yeah. really do much. And then I realized myself personally. Sorry, go, go. No, no, go ahead. Finish it. Like no. myself personally, it's like the more I keep myself busy with other things, I lose control of something down the line. Do you get what I mean? So right now, like I might go home and then focus on my lab work. You know what I mean? But then after I'll lose a bit of energy towards fair income. You know what I mean? Or I'll lose like the amount of like the hack that I should give my family mm. will decrease. Do you get what I mean? So it's one of those things. So as much as I gain control, I also lose control. It's this... It's a double-edged sword, essentially. Yeah, but you got to give everything its haq, yeah? Mm. Yeah. I get exactly what you mean, 100%. Because mm. some, some of the, I think it was Sahaba, or there was people that got married and they, they just kept praying. And then, was it Sulaiman Farsi? He told his friend, go, go, go so to sleep. Just, yeah, just the moral of the story is what is... It's basically, yeah, everything has its haq. Everything yeah. that Allah gives you, your body, your wife, if you get married... Oh, your husband, if you're a woman. Um, mm-hmm. um, then there's also like your food, you know, like the mosque has its haq too. Mm-hmm. You have to pray two rak'at before you walk in the mosque, like after you walk in the masjid. Mm-hmm. Like everything has its haq. And you have to make sure that when you're there, like Allah SWT has his haq over us too. The fara'id prayers, you know? We have to at least do our best to focus and, and, and be present and, and, and try and maximize our khushu' and salah because, bro, there's a lot of times we peck and all we're thinking about is what's happening after Salah, you know? For sure. You don't give yeah. 100% like so you said. Definitely. Like I'm going yeah. to speak for myself before anyone else. Like you just got to focus on what's at hand in the present time and yeah. you mm. smash out. The it links to the other first It links to the yeah, first question. Does, does. With the whole well, present well, thing. Well, yeah. yeah that, you get the uh, next one? What I was gonna, no, what I was going to say, sorry, yeah. uh, before I cut you. Sorry about that. Yeah, because w- once you guys started to give your opinions, then it started to like widen my idea of this question. <laughs> okay. And I said that I wanted less control, but then obviously it depends. But then I'm thinking now, once you, you mentioned prayer, and then you mentioned, you know, your friend being married and stuff, it says, do you need to be more more in control or less? I'll actually need to be more in control in the present, which is what yeah. you're trying to say, like, you know, mindfulness, actually practicing it daily, mm-hmm. strengthening that as well. Yeah. And that's just like, just really just, got, it's just a, another reminder just to focus, like even just now, not thinking about what's happening after this podcast. Yeah. Actually focusing on this current conversation. And it's not an easy thing to do. No, it's not. Remember that TEDx that um, you mentioned about the guy? I don't remember entirely, but the guy that just stood there and did nothing. Yeah. And he was being bored. He, he, he chased boredom. Yeah, boredom. Yeah. And then if you think about it, the whole thing about being present, it's not ha- It's not easy to be present. Mm. Like, think about the... Explain <laughs> the boredom thing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you the link to you guys, but he was talking about like, <laughs> how sometimes in boredom that's where creativity comes but when you're always stimulated when you're at Safeway and you're on the line and you're scrolling through your phone and you're driving and you're listening to something you never actually have time for your brain to wonder and mm. to think so you actually wanted to become bored to see how his <coughs> brain would think where it goes so he had a he had an email list because he was like a p- professor or something like he had, he had an email list so he messaged him and said what's the most boring thing I could do Someone said, for example, read the Apple's terms and conditions. So for one <laughs> hour, he read all of it. <laughs> and he goes, it wasn't that long. So he actually read it. One hour, he watched the clock. One hour, every single tick, tick. <laughs> he watched the clock for one hour. And he did all these things. And then at the end of it, he kind of spoke about how creativity, imagination, stimulates from these kind of things. Mm. But if you're always just on your phone, scroll, scrolling <laughs> social media, messaging, you actually restrict your brain from something that's been normal yeah. for, I'll say, 5,000 years. Yeah. It was very interesting. I think I may, may need to re-listen to that. Because there's, there's, um, like for example, they say that your brain is the least amount, like it's switched off when you're playing a game or whenever yeah. you're doing something that doesn't require too much effort. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know exactly what you mean. It's Just like driving. I was watching a mm-hmm. thing and it's like I'm driving and then I'm like, oh wait, I'm driving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. driving. How many red lights or <laughs> green lights? It's like, oh. did I get a fine or did I get a flash? But Go watch Judge Judy, man. Yeah. Same thing. You go to sleep. Wake it's kind of like. But it's one of the things I told the boys yesterday in the group I messaged. I'm like, uh, did I say I'm, I am I get entertained too frequently? Your brain shouldn't be entertained, yeah. say, six hours a day. Like, that, that wasn't what you were created for. And that wasn't how you were raised, like, biologically, like, past generation, your ancestors. That's not how life used to be. So I feel like myself, I get entertained too frequently. Let's say with social media or the conversations I try to have or what I try to do. It's like I shouldn't entertain myself and I shouldn't be stimulated so frequently. I should kind of have time for mindfulness. If you don't have time or create time to be mindful, like I said, and live in the moment or clarity, you're yeah. not going to get it. But we live in the era of stimulation, bro. It's very difficult for A us. Hyper, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. bro, the, you automatically, without even knowing you, you've already touched your phone. Like, you're already on your phone. You know? yeah. You're already on. I your don't want to take my screen time today. <laughs> <laughs> it, <bro. laughs> it's not as bad as mine. I'll tell you that. 
Yeah, I don't even get it. <laughs> Straight off the bat, it's not as bad. But I think about it. This morning, like last night, I forgot to put my phone in the charger. Yeah, my phone's just laying there. Oh, okay. I, I accidentally woke up because the light, like, because yeah. I didn't intend to, like, I was still, like, knackered halfway through my sleep, yeah? And then, the, like, the, the sun was beaming through my window. And then the first thing I realized was, like, my phone. Yeah, so I went to my phone and my phone's dead. I was pissed. Like, I wasn't pissed, but, like, in, my, in, in me, low-key, like, there was this, like, low-key annoying, like, I felt annoyed. So what I do, I would connect to my phone. Yeah, and the whole time I'm trying to go back to sleep, and I can't go back to sleep because I'm waiting for my phone to turn on. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah, <laughs> I guess what happens? I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I don't know if it's going on. Yeah, so I, it, when it turns on, like my notification started going ding. Yeah. Oh, that's what he was waiting for. And it's like <laughs> ding. <laughs> Dopamine. <laughs> it's like sorry, I slept, bro. It's eighty percent. All right, we'll do the next question after yeah, next that. Question. Yeah. <laughs> from, the, from the bottom or top? Oh, I thought it's actually, but you know, um. I didn't mean to end it like that. Um, this week I'm doing the thing, like 60 hours by myself. You know, when I go the oh, yeah, this yeah, Sunday, yeah, yeah. this Monday, this Saturday night after my game, I'm going to eat here and then I'm leaving. Mm. And I reckon that will be a good experience because it's kind of create mindfulness and clarity yeah. and stuff like that, Same you know? location. Yeah. Just in case you get lost. Nah, inshallah. Inshallah. Should be not. fine. Bro, you know the drive, Ashraf? Sorry, bro. You know the drive in of itself is going to be a, like a good mind. Try yeah. doing something. You remember when I went to the three-hour trip and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. The, the bit about the trip that I enjoyed the most was the th- sorry, the three-hour drive in of itself where normally I'd listen to a podcast yeah, or listen to something else mm. and I'd do that. And it's like, why don't I do nothing and drive and just like enjoy the drive? Mm. You know, because it's the whole thing with the drive. You know who I was speaking about before? It's like you do. Yeah, yeah. no, because this is why you. That's what psychos do. <laughs> it, I, it is. It I'd is. rather, I think I'd, me when I drive, I just don't think of anything because I'm so used to being similar. I reckon I'd rather go for a walk. I can walk without my phone it would probably create my mind thinking no, more. But what I'm saying you know? is, uh, what I'm saying, the drive, try that. Okay, like I'll try, try it. a different yeah, I got a lot of like When was yeah. the last time you drove not listening to listening anything? Listening to something. Or not doing anything but With driving. The radio or something Honestly, like that. Honestly, try to think about <laughs> it now. When was the last time? I don't know, maybe. So maybe, maybe you should try, try it now. Maybe, maybe a year ago. Even from driving to the post office straight away, I play something. Yeah, Bro. same. I'm the exact yeah. same. Ashraf's rear view mirror, the one up there, it's face that he's on himself. He's, gonna, he's like an accountability mirror for him. He's <laughs> <laughs> Ali, self-affirmation. When, when Ali drives my car. Like, you're soft. You're soft. You know, I don't drive using the mirrors. You only drive. Ali. What? Yeah, because so other day head checks. Nah, I nah, just a physical so head check. Bro. But you know how he does it? He, he does, does it as done. if he's doing the peace test. You know how you have to look, but you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, 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 he does this. <laughs> but you know what happened? Because the other day I realized I was Juma. I was I went to a roundabout and I was trying to find a parking spot. Yeah. So I stopped in the middle of the road, and then I looked in the mirror and I'm like, wait, that means when I break, I don't look in my mirror. <laughs> I don't break. I don't look in my rear view either. No, but you sh- I stopped completely. Stop on a you know main road. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is bad, bro. Yeah. Like. Next question. Epic roads. Well is it from the bottom? <laughs> or, uh, is it from the bottom or top? <laughs> Next <laughs> question. <laughs> oh, it's from, uh, one, okay. Wait, is it Sohel's? No, no, it's his. He hasn't. He hasn't asked. Oh, you yet. did the. That program. needs to get cut out. <laughs> yeah. Alright, this might be a personal one. Oh, Vic Road. So I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know if okay, I'll say it first. Then remember what they said at the start: be vulnerable. It's vulnerable. Alright, tell me something about your mother. That you didn't appreciate until you became older. Jeez. Yeah, come on, bro. We got it. You got to say it. One no, no. thing at least. Oh, oh, is it, is it for myself, you can just is copy paste his answer. All right, Ashraf, what do you think? Who's the better son? Three. Um, Ashraf, me. Think. Well, that was obviously like quick. In quick thinking, I think hard work. You know, because uh, my mom, mashallah, is a very hardworking individual. You know, and I think. Shout ben, out, Mumsy, man. Quick, go yeah. Man. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, shout out to my mom. <laughs> but I think like mm, even us like growing up, obviously there's families that same kind of things. But me, my sister, and Ali, like she had three kids under four to take care of, mm. and then she was doing that and she was working at the same time, you know. This and then this is when she started IBC. So at the same time she started the business, like she was still trying to expand and trying to do new things, you know, kind of thing. And she was like all the kids taken care of, and then she's always been trying to work and trying to balance everything. Like she's always down to expand and do more things you know like sometimes i think you know stay home mums all of them and the work they do it's like a full-time job you mm-hmm. know my mom obviously growing up the same kind of thing four kids taking care of them the amount of hard work and like times i know for me like when i come back from soccer training i'm wrecked and it's like don't tell me to do something you know what i mean yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. but mums don't have uh, mums mashallah they don't have that they don't have an off switch they don't have an option no. if, an off if, switch. if they if they finish uh, <laughs> if they work in the mornings and come back and then the sun goes i'm hungry and he's like five six seven they can't say 
for like it's gonna get mac and really. yeah. <laughs> it's a different world so i think my mum's ability to push herself in any situation yeah and then just the work ethic you know and you don't appreciate it bec- until like you you get put in those situations and you crumble and then you crumble and you crumble and it's like my mom got married 19 she has a kid whatever uh-huh. 23 at i'm 22 now but the amount of situations they get put in maybe younger and different like now you get used to playing soccer you get used to working but get having a kid and starting a new business or doing whatever it is expanding into different areas you don't have experience in it mm. so for them even under new circumstances to you know flourish like mashallah you know yes, and yes. all mothers do the same thing you know yeah for sure yeah mashallah so i think that shout yeah. out to mothers bro it was Mother's Day last week, by the way. So happy Mother's Day as well. Well, it wasn't last week. <laughs> was it? Like a month ago. Oh, like week. an Ramadan. Every yeah. day should be Mother's Every Day. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Carry on. That was the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Good that's, answer. That's crazy. <laughs> um, I think a quality that I would say probably, going off Ashraf's one, the hardworking bit, as well as like how mothers are selfless. Wait, is yeah. this your mum? Yeah, yeah. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> you said how mothers are. I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. By the way, the selflessness thing, I see it in all mothers. Mm. Like they put, like Ashraf was saying, you know what I mean? They come back from a long day or something. Like there is no off switch. Mm. You know what I mean? They're still going, still going. Yeah, they sure could that. put their needs before someone else. Always, yeah. Like, for example, there was this one time my mum traveled over to back home, yeah? And I remember she was traveling on her ones and she had. Back home is in Somalia? Yeah, Somalia. Yeah, okay. yeah, Somalia. <laughs> um, <laughs> she, she went on her ones, bro. <laughs> that she had my little sister with her. But then the thing was, like at the time, um, she that situation she could only travel with me and my l- her and the little sister. And then what happened was basically, I remember that time it was Ramadan, yeah. And she's stressing about the flight, and I can tell my mom like I know her when she gets stressed, she gets a bit agitated. They can't hide that. That's they, the they, one thing they can't do. They, they can't yeah, hide no. stress. They can't <laughs> hide it, bro. Yeah, and I'm getting stressed for her because I'm thinking about now she's got like a 16 hour like flight ahead of her, whatnot, and this that. What happened was, I remember at the time when we were leaving, it was, it was about time of like, I thought it was like iftar time. So we're breaking our fast. Yeah. Mind you, I don't know if you like ethnic parents when they're traveling, they have like 10 bags they're trying to fill in. And <laughs> well, they're taking the whole house with them when they go on overseas. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Their luggage goes from, so it's only allowed 30 kilos. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And they, they've got like 90 kilos with them. Do you know what I mean? And the, whatever. Bro, sometimes they put a luggage in the luggage. In the luggage. <laughs> <laughs> so then when they bring more back it's like and then they, when the guy goes to them hey like what the hell you got extra what, what? and then anyway um your scale's wrong <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a funny one anyway um my mom basically i remember there was this one moment where she had like dates in her bag yeah mind you i didn't care about my fast like i'm a minimal guy like not high maintenance at all yeah so i'm thinking when i get there i'll just break my fast whatnot mm. At home, she had dates, she packed. Yeah, so she's packing everything that she's going with, yeah? And mind you, she's got to care for herself and the little one, yeah? She goes to the hospital, not to the hospital, to the airport, and she's got dates for me and my brother who took her to the, the airport. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, it's something very, very small. It's like dates and whatnot. Like, but I'm thinking, like... She's got so she, much awareness. For she's you. got so much awareness. Yeah, she's no traveling problem. to the other side of the world, yet she's still thinking about me. And I always say to her, like, don't worry about me. Like, I always say this one saying to her, like, she says, oh, she gives me an extra plate or something like that. So don't worry about me. Mm. She goes, how can I not worry about you? She, it's, she doesn't even have control about the worriness. It's, fine, it's like this rahmah that Ilay put in her heart. You know what I mean? That she's got no control. And I look at that and I go, That makes six sense, bro. I can't, uh, bro. I'm telling you now. Yeah. I see, bro, Allah has in this morning. I was leaving the house yeah. to go to work. And then I go, hey, before you meet me at the warehouse, one thing, she goes, I brought the bottle with me. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you weird lady, bro. Like, get out of my head, you sicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly. But no, well, they're, they're like, mashallah, bro, their mm. awareness level is mm. 100%. And it's the thing that's the most annoying as well, but it's the thing you appreciate the most. Yeah. Subconsciously, like th- they, that's exactly right. It fits the prom perfectly. Mm. Like when you're younger, you're like, "Mom, get off my back! Get oh, off, there's nothing yeah. wrong. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing mm. wrong." And you get older, you're like, "Fuck!" She's just like so switched on. She knew there yeah. was something wrong. Instinct, man. You know, yeah. it's not even like thought. They just know. Yeah. Just a feeling. Yeah, it's mom. Like yeah, the, your mom will run for a war for you, bro. If she had to, man. They just like that, bro. Subhanallah. You can't get that relationship with anyone else as well. No, it's special. Like, you know what's bad? What? You know when guys get married, they're like, I want the girl to be like my mom, bruv. No one can do that. Yeah. Mm. No one can do yeah, that. It's yeah. unfair on the girl and it's unfair yeah. on yourself. You started you something. Also <laughs> expectations. You can't start a relationship it's on that. It's a chance, bad foundation. Bro. No yeah. one can ever do that, bro. Yeah. But there's going to be things your wife can do that your, your mom, mom can't, can't do. Yeah. And things your mom can't, c- can do and your wife can't. Mm. It's just how... Well, you know, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Yeah. How relationships are, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. No, it's, it's, their selflessness is crazy. 
And I realized why, why I said before, like mothers, not just my mom specifically, because I know a mate of mine who I work with, yeah, she got, she had her first baby, yeah, and she had a, like, um, sorry about that. She had her first baby, yeah, and when she had her first baby, we were speaking about it on the, we went to dinner once and whatnot, we're kicking it, um, her and her family. And then she was telling me about how the thing, the single most thing that she realized about herself, her personality, when she became a mother, was how much she cares about herself less. And she said, I didn't even, I didn't even have control over that. Yeah. Like I used to be a person where like the only other person I cared about was my husband. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Mm. Like immediate family, obviously. Now I care about my daughter. It's her daughter. Shout out Ella. She cares about her daughter, Ella, way more than she cares about her husband. And herself. It's one of those things where it's like my life now is built around raising this person. Mm. That's the only, that's the biggest priority in my life. Yeah. And that only switches when you have a kid. Yeah, the crazy I thing, yeah. they don't know when it developed. It's literally a flick of the switch. It just yeah. happens before you even know it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. How about you two? So you have the same mom though. Do you have different qualities that you enjoy? No, I think the, the hard working thing is just, it's like, it could be like number one, mm-hmm. the hard working, because it's just the juggling of everything. And it says, until you appreciate it, so I only started appreciating, to be honest, when I started working in the business with my mom, seeing exactly what she does. Because mm-hmm. obviously, come, seeing her come home at the end of the day, you just see how like how her body is at the end of the day, and not what she's done physically, yeah, or what she's done like what she's gone through mentally, the people she has to deal with. Mm. Can I ask you a question? I want to flip it real quick. Yeah, um, would you say your your dad also has that same quality? Because I know your dad; he's a hard worker too. Mm. But why do you realize that? Why does that stand out about your mum more? This isn't about fathers. Yeah. This isn't about fathers. That name's yeah. still the limelight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I say that though? It's because yeah. like I know the selflessness thing. Like my dad doesn't have it. Like I know my uncles who are also fathers. They don't have it to the degree that the mothers have it. You know what I mean? Like my mother's hardworking. My dad's hardworking. Oh. Do, do you get what I mean? Like yeah, 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 for, for it's sure. just one of those things where it's like if my mum and dad both come back from nine to five because maybe how it's raised mm. and how the marriage is. Yep. My dad can go on the couch and my mum would have to go cook. She'd be still on her feet. Ha- yeah. It's one of those. It's like, or my dad will help. My dad will do the dishes after. But he still gets to rest for those two hours. Then he will do something. But the mum would go do that. And then uh, late at night when my dad's doing the dishes, she'll be like, I'll go do the washing. I'll go do the extra. It's a non-stop. Want it any other way. Yeah, yeah. Th- yeah. But that's yeah. the thing. Bro. So the mum always does a bit more. Yeah. And that's why it's like Jenna's under her feet. Who do you love the most? Your mum, your mum, yeah. your mum, and then mm. your dad. There's a different rank between the you mother know. and the father. I beg you, watch your mum. If she makes Ramadan f- food, Ramadan is the funniest thing on earth. Wow. So we had my, 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 all my family over. So everyone's kicking it. And then all you see is, mum's finished cooking. Yeah, it's time to eat. If daughter's done, like basically everything's done. There's nothing else to do. Mum's just in the kitchen watching. I'm looking at her. I'm like, have you even had tamar yet? And she um, goes, she goes, yeah. oh, she's eating, don't worry about me. Yeah, I'll back fast in like 10 minutes. Have you eaten? Mom's the same. No. She, she's doing like extra things, even though there's already like finger foods and dates to break your I'm fast. She's doing the second thing. She just touched plates on the thing to make it look like she's doing something. It's amazing. <laughs> she doesn't, do she washed yeah. the plate like you, you just finished eating a little bit. But see how their mind works? It's like, what's okay, I've done this, the thing I have to do, what's the next thing? Yes. Like you said, there's no off switch. There's no off switch. Like, I'm like you see with fathers, like they get the opportunity, I think, with like taking that off switch, but mums don't want to take it because mm. they can't. They just have that care for other people. Mm. Yeah, mm. I reckon just for me, the one thing that I didn't appreciate when I was younger, but I appreciate now, mashallah, is my mum's ability to endure pain, which is so weird. But you, you realize that you notice it sometimes, yeah? Your mum could be going through so much <laughs> physical or mental or emotional pain, and you won't hear a lick about it from her. Mm. You won't hear nothing, you know? And there was a lot of times where Masha'Allah, like, obviously went develop on it, but my mom had surprised me by how much she could take. And then I looked at myself, for example, I rolled my ankle, or, you know, I'd done my finger in a football match, like, or something mm. happened to me, and I was just, like, physically taxed. Yeah. And, and also, your mood gets affected. Your yeah, whole life, you're like, don't yeah, talk yeah. to me for t- 48 yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't, you can't <laughs> handle it. And then you see your mom's like, and then you find out later on that she had, like, for example, she went and she got an x ray done or whatever, because the pain became a little bit too unbearable. Mm. And then she's like, I'm just going to go see what happened. And then you find out, like, what? Mm. All that, this time you've mash up, bro. Yeah. You look at yourself, you're like, I am the biggest. Mm. <laughs> I know. 
Even like for bleep, example, bleep, bleep, female, bleep, bleep. Th- they go through like the time of the month, and they still have to work or do these kind of stuff. And then I see those videos online when guys get the same pain, and the guys oh, they can't get shocked. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. electrical thing. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. They can't handle it. It's Crazy, like bro. obviously it's different because pain tolerance gets stronger over time, bro. and you get used Mashallah. to it. Like not used to it, but it becomes like a little more bearable. But these guys, it's like Subhanallah, we can't handle that kind of pain. Wallah. You know, imagine that every single day for a week, every month or something like that. It's like Subhanallah, and their life has to keep going. Yeah, Wallah, shout out, yeah. Mumsy. You know, you know that situation you speak of there. I always try and look back in like like what's happened because I think I'm a pretty aware person. Like, and I can analyze the situation. I can t- sort of tell if someone's off, even if they haven't said anything. Yeah. Yeah. And I try to do that about my mum. Yeah. And I go, at what point in this certain time did she go through it? You know what I mean? Or when did she get yeah, that when X-ray? When did it start? When did it start? Yeah, 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 and you know what the funny thing is? You can't pinpoint it. Yeah. Like she'll pick you up from school or yeah, she'll do this forever, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And that brave face yeah. is just... Yeah. Oh, oh mate. Yeah. I was just going to say, may Allah bless our mums in their face. Yeah, oh, 100%. 100%. Bismillah. Let's move to the next question. I'm not tagging you though, mum. Wallah, that's, that's enough of a shout out for you. <laughs> 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 I'm joking, you top lady. Okay. Um, That's probably not relatable to us. Not a good one. You pick one that you, you think is relatable. Are you married? Are you I married got a question, or? Sus. Tell me. So, would you want that? Like, um, is this part of your game? No, no. Let's continue on with the question. Then. Oh. Would you have appreciated an open dialogue with my mum? Yeah. Like when I was younger? Yeah. Oof. Like, would you have appreciated um, if you. I know what you mean, because majority cause of people from ethnic backgrounds, their parents kind of have a bit of a. There's not a language barrier, but more like a. A communication yeah, barrier. Yeah, yeah, communication barrier. You're yeah. right. Um, I remember at one stage, like I think this is actually in relation to what you're talking about. You didn't realize it until you get older, but yeah, less is more. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's no need for explanations. It is, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I would say that I trust my mom's judgment yeah. now that I look back. But when I was younger, or maybe like three years ago, four years ago, I probably would have resented her for mm-hmm. it. Like, oh, like, why didn't you talk to me about it? And and I'm pretty sure everyone goes through that little space where sure. they kind of have a little hissy fit about what happened in their life. And yeah. they'll always blame somebody and they have to pick someone. The easy target is the mom or the dad, you know? It's part of growing up, yeah. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. basically, I reckon I would have... No. I reckon they, they, they keep things from us that they need to keep from us. And, and, and they do it for a reason. And maybe their reasons are unjustified, but you got to respect it, you know? Yeah, 100%. you got to respect parents it. Parents make, t- what's it, 5,000 decisions through your kid's life. Yeah. They're bound to make some mistakes. 100, 100. And also, you might think later on, I said you said two years ago, I had that big change. Yeah, yeah. Two years ago, you might not think you need change. So then now you look at it and you're like, why didn't you tell me? Because you have your mindset now. But two years ago, you weren't ready for it. 100. And there's certain moments in your life, it's like when you're 14, 15, 20, you, you might just not be mature enough or it's not even worth saying or the Definitely. parents made a mistake. No, it's well part of life, sure, you know? Sure. Not even the mistake thing. It's like most of it, like I know myself personally, I couldn't have bear the situation, bore the situation. Is bore the right word? Couldn't have say bore. bear the situation. I couldn't have bared any of bared. <laughs> well, I don't know yeah, if you mean more than the one past. Yeah. Yeah, bore. I couldn't <laughs> have bore. We'll search that up later. Anyway, like I don't think I could have like Dull. handled or dealt with any of the situations like if I was, t- if everything was openly communicated. Mm. You, do you know what I mean? Like 100%, as yeah. much as people say, oh, you have to have that open dialogue. And sometimes, like you said, less is more. Yeah. The less you tell your children is probably protecting them as they go older. Mm. But there's, you have to appreciate it. You know why? Because mm. they guard, because a lot of, things that kids do is basically they kind of they internalize things they don't know how to they don't know how to like separate was it safe they go hey sorry boys but i have to let you guys know that we're currently in a lot of debt you know imagine that imagine having that conversation with a 15 year old or a 10 year old i mean you're like a mac isn't give me all the money do you understand or not like mm. a lot of the times people from a, a low socioeconomic background yeah th- what they would do is the parents will work endless hours but you obviously see the stress on their face but the reason they don't tell the kid is because the kid will think about getting money through whatever means necessary but you're not responsible enough to be making that decision you know you know, you know what show was like that top boy top boy yes exactly with, with ats and his mum telling him about the situation exactly. where, where did he end up doing selling he, drugs he, and then or he got involved in the wrong situations because he had good intentions and they say a lot of times mm the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, for example, that. Like, he wanted to go and make money for his mum, and he's like, any means necessary, and then here come the groomers. Mm. Let's go to the gang. Yeah. Bang. 
yeah, for sure. Then before you know it, he's stuck. He can't get himself out. His yeah. education's gone, and this, that, and definitely. And the, even even the the little things a child goes through as a way of growing up are oh, taken def- away from him. Definitely. You get what I mean? Like going to school, playing around, going to soccer games on the weekends and stuff like that, all taken away, a childhood. Yeah, yeah. there's an element of trauma to it as well. Mm-hmm. So you, it's not something that you should be putting your kids through at that age. Yeah, for like sure. Like there's some things you, you, you protect. You protect, I don't know if that's their innocence, but you're protecting their, 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 their ability to be a child, basically. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You for don't sure. want them to become a man too early or, 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 a, or yeah. a woman too early. And it's not easy either because kids are naturally curious. Oh, as well, do you get what I mean? So like kids, like eavesdrop over conversations that happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then later on, they hear something that they probably shouldn't have heard. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then later on, they they sort of internalize that situation and they lack they lash out at the world. Oh, definitely, you know I mean? definitely, yeah. Sure Next question, boys. What's your routine when you are angry? 